Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. We join in our first hymn, 264. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. <laughs>
Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for the second Sunday in Advent is found in the third chapter of Malachi. A reading from Malachi. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord who you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and a full of soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offerings, offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. Word of, Lord, word of God, word of life. second reading is found in first Philippians, a reading from Philippians. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I'm confident of this, that the one who began a good, a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart, for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and configuration of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best so that in the day of Christ, you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of. Word of God, word of life. Please stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. In the 15th year of the reign of the emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler of Galilee and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene. During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, 
Prepare the way of the Lord. Make His path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, perhaps to state the obvious, these beginnings of these books, right, the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, da, 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 and when we have these, basically what they're saying is December the 5th, 2021. We have shortened it, or we can thank the Romans for that, actually, but <laughs> nevertheless. Um, so that's what they were doing, was dating it, putting it, putting the event in a place in time. And they could do that by going after it in the way that they did. So that's, that's why that's there. And that's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> when I was in college. I decided, of course, and, you know, I was in a liberal arts school and, and, and I had to take certain things. Now, you, you have either read or know that I, I did psychology and secondary education. So that's really where I was trying to focus, right? But I had to take an art requirement, actually two. One I did piano and we studied hymns because I knew I was going into the seminary. He said, what do you want to do with this? I said, I'm going to use hymns. He said, then we'll just use the hymn book, bring one in. <laughs> well, I couldn't do that twice. The other one, I threw clay. Now, I'm looking at the syllabus and looking at it and I'm saying, okay, I got enough, enough else going on this where's sylvia there we are this should be easy <laughs> some of you may know this guy i i think he did um the ceramic uh chalice patent and chalice that that we have um but he was from italy he was a master sculptor from italy came over to the states ended up teaching this class. He was an interesting guy. So there I am sitting at the wheel with this piece of clay. And it wasn't doing what I wanted, but you know, being the stubborn guy that I am, I wasn't given up. And so I'm sitting there and I'm playing with it. I have no idea how long I was there. Um, because we could go in anytime the building was open and play with this thing. Yeah, I, and, and at one point, my teacher comes over behind me and he says, stop the wheel. And reaches, reaches from behind me, takes his fist, <laughs> and, and smashes what I was working with. I wasn't too happy with him at the moment, at that, that moment, right? <laughs> I was pretty angry at him. And he looked at me and he said, now you can start fresh. Now, now you can start fresh. Right. So wrapped up, I was going to make this thing work. And no matter what, and that's, and you know, have you ever done that kind of thing that just, you just stop seeing everything else around? I'm going to make this work. And, and, and sometimes the best thing to do is to take a step back. 
that was the thing I discovered about clay after that point is I could always have a fresh start. And then after some time, I realized it was fun to smash my own stuff. Yeah. <laughs> right. Tent. Prepare the way of the Lord. This isn't necessarily such a negative thing. I and mean, we always hear this John the Baptist, and he comes out and he and he yells at the, the scribes and the Pharisees, and ah, uh, and and he, and you can almost picture this guy with a real tube, right? You, you know, but but what's he saying here? It's time to smash what you got, Israel. And start fresh. Prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet. You know, the Old Testament's bigger than the New Testament. <laughs> right? Right? And it just seemed to be the same thing over and over again. And it's time for something new. Smash, pick it up, put it over here, and grab a new block of clay. And that new block of clay happened to be, come on, yeah, come on, you all know that one, right? That new block of clay was Jesus. Now, New blocks of clay aren't always welcome, right? Jesus wasn't welcome. I've been in the, the church thing my life, right? And new ideas aren't always the most popular things in the world, especially when you've been, when you've had your clay smashed, right? But I've done it that way forever. Thank you. Oh, always done it that way. Yeah, there's the phrase. Right? Right? And I've worked at it, and I've worked at it. Right? And, and, you know, it just needs to be the way it is. If, uh, boy, if I've heard this once, I've heard it a million times. If people who don't go to church would just understand and do it the way we want it to be done, they don't say that last part, but they kind of do, right? <laughs> right? Repent. Prepare the way of the Lord. So, and I forgot to bring one up here. Bummer. <laughs> Pretend I'm holding up a budget. <laughs> We meet now. And, and one of the things we discuss is financial commitment to the church. But, but I'd really like us to look at that piece of paper. It, it, it is more than the numbers that are crunched. I understand. It certainly is part of what we are asking as a church, I'm grabbing my wallet here, we're asking for you to pull out of your wallet and give to this ministry. Uh, yeah. No kidding. Right? But this budget needs to be seen as a way to smash and pull aside. I'm doing this on opposite sides. Huh? Um, and pick up the new block. It was Jesus. And who knows where we go? 
And, and we walk this in the middle of unprecedented times. Believe you me, I lament. I was just lamenting to April yesterday and saying, oh man, this is by this point, I wanted to be talking about new ministries and new this and ways that we could grow. And, and, and uh, I get it. I lament too. But that doesn't make me give up. Repent and prepare. Take the clay the way that we used to do things and put it aside. Doesn't mean it was bad or wrong or any of that silliness. But we start fresh. And we go about this in a different way. And despite the pandemic, the power of God can be heard. That's our call. See the budget that way. And who knows, Sylvia, what we will paint on that blank canvas. And that's why I'm picking on her. Who knows when we look at that blank canvas of a budget, what together we will create. That's exciting. Amen. the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. The third day He rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Send your spirit to all living creatures that are endangered. Provide them with shelter and care and bring us into right relationship with the earth that you create and call good. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Send leaders to our nations, cities, schools, and businesses to work on behalf of those who have lost parents, spouses, and loved ones, immigrants, the imprisoned, those living in poverty, and all who are oppressed. Make them bold in their commitments to justice and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Send your servants to care for those who suffer. Use our ministries and lives to reach out with compassion to those who are hungry, oppressed, lonely, or ill, especially Noah, Alan, Tom, Shirley, Dorothy, Jared, David, Sue, Chris, Colton, Linda, and Ruth, Robert, Pauline, Jackie, Hattie, Doris, the family of Mike Armeo, the Strupp family, the Siniscali family, the family of Kim Sigafus, Dave, George, Bonnie, and those we now name aloud or silently in our hearts. Grant them healing and wholeness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Send prophets to speak difficult truths, even when they are poorly received. Embolden those who ask hard questions and challenge accepted ways. Instill in youth and elders alike a passion for pointing to Jesus in all things. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We remember your saints both those publicly celebrated and those more humbly remembered, especially Kim Sigafus and those we now name aloud or silently in our hearts. Confident that your work will be completed, we live in faith until the day of your coming. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the Northeast Pennsylvania Synod of Allentown, the Bishop of our Synod, and the Reverend Christopher DeForest. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, we pray for an end to the pandemic COVID-19. Encourage all to receive the vaccine you gave as a gift. Comfort those who have lost loved ones and send your healing spirit on those who are ill. Help us be thankful for those working on the front lines. We name Cindy, Laura, Nick, and David. Joe, Jim, Tom, and those we name aloud or in our hearts. Keep them safe in your protective care. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, who come among us in the places that we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts 
In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. Please share a sign of God's peace one with another. Two words on this whole.
Let us pray. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation, and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer through whom you will make all things new. In the day when he comes again to judge the world in righteousness, and so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name, and together we will speak. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of, of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, the beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope, we praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and peace of your Son. To him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. Please be seated. Now for those in the pew, please remove the cellophane. The body of Christ given for you. blood of Christ shed for you.
as you were comfortable and able, I would ask that you please stand. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Let us pray. God, for whom we wait in this meal, you give us a foretaste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our hymn, and this is not a time for you to scurry out, 256.